Samuel Khairi and my talk is entitled Flexible Rational Exponent Auditory Filters. Now, auditory filters um, and associated filter banks and multi-band filters are useful for a variety of applications, including cochlear implants, um, perceptual studies, even things we wouldn't necessarily think about, like underwater sound classification and digital stethoscopes for the classification of lung pathologies. Um, it's also useful for vocoders, uh, frequency multiplexers, and potential hearing aids. And what these filters look like is as follows. So on the top, we have magnitudes, and at the bottom, we have phase as a function of frequency. And let's take a look at the body plot for one of these filters. Let's take a look at the blue curve here. Um, and you can see that this auditory filter is a bandpass filter that peaks at a certain frequency. Um, it has some bandwidth or quality factor, um, and it has some maximum group delay. And filter banks are basically a, a bank of these filters, um, each peaking at a different frequency, at a different peak frequency. All right, so let's consider uh, one particular class of auditory filters um, that can be represented as um, a rational function. Um, and more specifically, this class of filters uh, includes filters like the all-pole gametone filters and the generalized auditory filters. And these can be expressed um, or formulated as a, a rational transfer function that has a pair of complex conjugate poles repeated BU times, where BU is an integer, uh, BU is a positive integer. Now let's consider the repercussions of having BU being restricted to an integer value um, as it is currently. Um, so what we have here on the left is magnitude and on the right is phase as a function of normalized frequency or frequency divided by the peak frequency. And we have this for um, two consecutive values of integer BU. Um, and one is the, um, you know, the blue dashed line, uh, BU is one, and the red dashed line, BU is two. And you can see here that there's a great deal of uh, room, let's say, for fine, finer tuning of behavior. Um, and so this motivates the idea of extending these filters to be rational exponent filters. And so let's see what kind of added flexibility there is uh, once we extend things to rational filter. So we're taking a rational transfer function, or we're taking this um, generalized auditory filter, or the all-pole gametone filter, um, and we're extending that so that the exponent is now any positive rational number. And provided that the original filter is causal and bebo stable, then the um, rational exponent filter is also going to be causal and bebo stable. Now, uh, what happens once we allow for rational exponents um, is as follows. Let's go back to our Bode plots. Um, and consider, in addition to the case where we have two consecutive integer uh, exponents, we have uh, some value in between, some rational number in between. So here we're taking BU to be one and a half. Um, so if we look at the solid black line here, we can see that indeed we're accessing some in-between behavior, right? thereby allowing for more flexibility um, in specifying the filter characteristics and, and thereby how it processes incoming signals. And let's make this a little bit more quantitative. So let's consider um, a filter characteristic of interest. Let's take this um, thing in pink here, which is the ratio of the uh, 3 dB quality factor to the 15 dB quality factor. And uh, this characteristic is plotted as a function of the value of the exponent BU. And if we, you can see that if we restrict the uh, exponent BU to be an integer, uh, what we get are these um, pink boxes. Whereas if we allow it to be an exponent, uh, a rational exponent, then we can access this continuum of characteristics. So we can, we can have any value along this line here. Um, and so that shows you know, the, that indeed we have this uh, access to a continuum of filter characteristics rather than these discrete characteristics um, that, are, uh, that we're, would be constrained to if we're limited to integer exponent filters. Um, and this is not just the case for this uh, filter characteristic. It's also the case for um, the uh, ERB, equivalent rectangular bandwidth quality factor, um, divided by the maximum group delay. Of course, there are certain characteristics that are, are not going to benefit from uh, having rational exponent filters because they're not sensitive to the value of BU in the first place, such as the ratio of the quality factor um, from the equivalent of tangled bandwidth to the quality factor of 10 dB. But the point that I want you to take from this slide is really that allowing for rational exponents uh, enables us to impose arbitrary continuous specifications of these filter characteristics and really be able to control or finally control um, and fine tune the behavior. So I've shown you the uh, transfer function representation for the rational exponent filters, and that's ideal for studying things like causality and stability and really understanding uh, quantitatively um, the impact of uh, allowing for rational exponents on the continuum of uh, filter characteristics. Um, but there are certain limitations to the uh, transfer function representation. One is, of course, that the direct implementation is restricted to digital software. And also, when solving for things computationally, uh, we'd have to use things like a, from a discrete Fourier transform perspective, which is, of course, not equivalent exactly to what we've um, formulated. So, and we're driving things, um, you know, in the Laplace uh, transform uh, perspective or, you know, closer to Fourier transforms, uh, where things are continuous and um, aperiodic, whereas once we've moved to the computational um, domain, we've, uh, we've used something, or, you know, discrete Fourier transforms that assume that the signal is uh, periodic and discrete. Um, and so the output from these transfer function formulations is not going to be exact. And of course, there's always the additional consideration of zero padding and aliasing, et cetera. 
So it's quite useful um, towards having uh, realizable auditory filters with flexible impl implementations to have different representations. Um, and one of the ones that I'm going to show you are the um, impulse response and um, integral representations. All right, so let's start with the impulse response. Um, now, we've derived using transform methods the uh, impulse response function for the uh, rational exponent filters. And you can see that it's in terms of some you know, special function here. Um, the thing is that it is limited to um, integer and uh, half integer values of the exponents. However, one powerful thing about the impulse response representation is that it can be approximated quite well um, as a, an extrapolated version of gamma tone filters, uh, where the oscillatory term is no longer limited to cosines, cosines and sines, but rather can have arbitrary phase um, as specified by the rational BU. And that's quite relevant, you know, having being able to approximate the rational exponent filters using an extrapolation of the widely used gamma filters, because that means that we can leverage existing uh, implementations towards implementing the rational exponent filters. Um, now, the other representation that I want to show you are the integral representations. Um, and this, you know, this is a little bit involved, but all, all I want you to, you to take from this is that if you have some input U of T, um, or U of T tilde here, you can express the output Q um, as uh, basically some nested integrals. Um, and this is, this is valid for any uh, positive rational exponent BU. Um, and if, there are a few things that we want to um, you know, notice or, or take away from this. Um, one is that you, know, you can see the integrals here from you know, zero to some number. Um, so basically, these, uh, the integral representation can be used for real-time processing. Um, additionally, the uh, integral representation can be directly implemented in digital software. Um, and it might be useful towards thinking about integrator-based um, digital hardware implementations, um, as long as those integrators have the capacity to deal with complex numbers during intermediate steps. Um, and you know, the next thing that I want to show you here um, is basically, you know, we've talked about these various representations. I haven't shown you yet that they indeed do give the correct solution, um, so or the the expected output given an input. So what we have here is um, a time series of an input that we can solve the output for analytically for a rational exponent filter. Uh, and here we have the uh, the exponent being one one and a half, um, and the output for that is um, below here um, as a function of time. And you can see that the uh, the blue true solution, the analytic solution, uh, which lies behind the red dashed line. Um, and then we have the red dashed line, which is the integral uh, solution that we've computed. And the yellow dotted line is the um, a transfer function uh, computed response. And you can see that the integral representation uh, or formulation do does indeed match the true solution quite exactly. Um, whereas the transfer function representation does have a little bit of deviation at the beginning. So that um, you know, strengthens the uh, case for having these representations uh, for uh, rational exponent filters, especially the integral representation. Uh, now, in the, putting these in action, let me just show you a few plots here. Um, so here we have an input, um, which is a tone pips as a function of time, and the output computed using a transfer function formulation uh, for BU uh, 2.5. Um, and you can see here that qualitatively, we do get what we expect, which is that the, um, the filter responds uh, maximally at a particular uh, frequency and, and uh, close frequencies, um, and that it responds with a delay to the uh, input. Uh, similarly, we can uh, do this using the integral representation. Um, so at the top, we have time series. At the bottom, we have spectrograms. Um, and the left here, you can see the input, uh, which is a quadratic chirp. Um, and you can see on the right, the output. Again, we're responding maximally to certain frequencies. Um, as shown you know, more clearly in the spectrogram. So again, qualitatively, it does, it does act as we'd expect. Uh, so what we've done here is introduce rational exponent auditory filters, which provide a great deal of flexibility um, in terms of accessible filter behavior compared to their integral counterparts. Um, and they allow for specifying a continuum of filter characteristics rather than being limited to these discrete values. We've also derived conditions on causality and vivo stability, and we've derived um, you know, uh, equivalent representations uh, towards implementations um, to, so, to show that these filters are realizable, um, at least you know, in digital software. Um, and we've shown you know, the um, impulse response representation that can leverage existing methods uh, based on gamma tone filters. And we've shown the integral representation, which allows for real-time implementations. As far as future directions are concerned, we naturally want to extend these to digital hardware implementations. Uh, and we also want to ex extend the concept of rational exponent filters to other filters, uh, where it's desired to have this fine control and this greater flexibility in behavior. Um, and of course, lastly, we want to be able to use these rational exponent filters uh, for various applications and make any modifications necessary towards that, um, that application, whether it's non-linearity or something else. Uh, so with that, um, I end my talk and I open the floor to questions.